is Miss Miranda from Rocket Baptist Church. Um, this is our Sunday morning lesson. We've been talking a lot about the things that Jesus did in um, the last days before he went to heaven, before he died on the cross. So we're going to talk about something else that he did today. Um, first, I want to tell you a story. Uh, this is a story about a little boy named uh, Charlie, and he had a big brother named Justin. Well, Charlie and Justin were outside, and they had these really good plans drawn up to build their own tree house. And so, Justin was older, so he was in charge of the saw and cutting all the wood. Charlie was getting to use the hammer and the screwdriver. There went my wrench. Um, but he was getting to, to help, too. He just wasn't getting to use the saw. And so, he was hammering away, and, and he was getting to screw in the screws. But he was not happy because his big brother, Justin, kept being the one to do the saw and cut the wood, and he was getting mad. Well, Justin needed to go in the house and go to the bathroom, and um, just went in the house, went to the bathroom, and good old Charlie thought, hmm, nobody's looking. I'm going to go get the saw. So he gets the saw, and sure enough, he he's cutting, and, you know, he's, he's trying his best. But he keeps rearing that saw back, and he was getting it really close to his leg. Well, right about that time, his big brother, Justin, looked out the window. He was washing his hands, and he was looking out the window, and he saw, and he's like, Dad, Dad, Charlie's out there with the saw. He's about to cut his leg. And, of course, Justin and his dad both went out there, got the saw from Charlie, took it away from him before he got his leg cut. Now, how would you feel if you were Charlie? Maybe you would feel like, oh, that's not fair. My big brother, why would he get to tell me what to do? It's not fair he always gets to do that. And he went and tattled on me. Or maybe you feel, wow, you know, that was nice of him to go and tell my dad because I was about to get hurt. Well, the reason I tell you that story is not because we're going to build a tree house. Sorry. Um, although that would be a good project to do now that a lot of us are stuck at home. Maybe you've got some wood laying around. Maybe you could build something really cool. Um, but no, I want to tell you that story because we have someone that goes and talks to the Father for us too. And that's Jesus. Jesus is God's son. And he goes and talks to his father all the time for us. He's praying for us. That's our Bible point today. Jesus prays for us. See, remember when we talked about in the Last Supper when Jesus and the 12 disciples were sitting in the room and they were eating the bread and they were drinking the wine? And a couple of things that Jesus did. Jesus reminded them about all the things he'd been teaching them. He'd been walking with them serving and loving and doing things for like three and a half years. And they had watched a lot of what he did, but he was kind of reminding them. Remember when I told you this? Remember when I said this? And so that was one of the things they did. And then one thing that he did before they wrapped up the meal is Jesus prayed for them. And it's interesting because um, it tells us in Hebrews that Jesus is still praying for us. Um, even though he didn't see us way back then, he was praying for us then, and he still prays for us today. So let's see what he prayed for those 12 disciples about, and we're going to see kind of what he prays for us too, which is kind of important right now because I know some of you are um, maybe a little worried about what's going on, or maybe you wonder, you know, what is Jesus doing? Well, Jesus and God, they're still doing the same things they were last week and the week before and thousands of years ago. They, they are still doing a good job at being God. But let's see what Jesus prayed for, for his disciples. In John chapter 17, where they're having the Last Supper, Jesus was praying. Um, and, and the words that he said were, um, Father in heaven. Like he's talking to his father. Just like Justin was talking to his father about Charlie. Father in heaven, thank you for my followers who believe in me. Please protect them. So, these men, 
these 12 disciples were about to go out into the world and they were spot, they were going to start talking about Jesus, talking about Jesus, preaching about Jesus. And especially after Jesus died, that was going to be a scary time because they might get hurt. But Jesus wasn't saying protect them from disease, from getting sick, from getting hurt. Jesus was actually praying to protect them from the evil one. Now, who's the evil one? Satan. So, you know, there's things in our life, you know, that might happen. We might get sick. We might get a boo-boo. We might get um, in the hospital for a little while. But Jesus was saying, more importantly, I want you to be protected from the evil one. That's Satan. See, Satan right now is trying to trick some of you. He's trying to lie to you and tell you, you know, oh, that, you know, Jesus isn't really real or he doesn't love you or he doesn't care about you. And that is a lie from Satan. And Jesus wants you to be protected from those lies. So he right now is praying to God. God, please protect my boys and girls. Please protect them. Don't let them listen to Satan. Don't let them to believe those lies. Help them to remember, I do love them. I care about them. I see where they're at, and I know what they're going through. Now, the next thing that Jesus prayed over his disciples is he said, Father, please fill these followers with all of your joy. It would be really easy for the disciples to get sad after Jesus died, to worry, like, oh, no, they killed Jesus. Are they going to hurt me, too? What are what are we going to do? How are we? Jesus didn't want them to worry. He didn't want them to be sad. He wanted them to be filled with God's joy. And the same thing is true for us right now. Jesus is praying, dear Jesus, please help these boys and girls to be filled with your joy. Help them to not be sad, to not be worried, to not be scared. Help them to be filled with joy, to walk around and say, you know what? It's a good day. The sun is shining, or it's a good day because nobody in our house is sick, or mom, it's a good day because we have toilet paper, or it's a good day because we we got to make a cake this week. Um, some of you are going to have a birthday this week. I know my daughter Hannah, she had a birthday this week, and you know she was excited to have a birthday, but then she was kind of sad because. She didn't get to have a party. She didn't get to have friends come over. You know, it was a different kind of birthday for her. But she could still be filled with joy and think of all the good things that God has done for her this year and all the good things that he's going to do next year. Okay, we can be filled with joy. Another thing that Jesus prayed is, Father, make my followers be set apart through your word. Set apart through your word. See, there's a lot of boys and girls right now that are sitting at home and they're watching things that they should not be watching. And they're saying words that they should not be saying like, no, mom, I'm not going to do my schoolwork. Or they're lying or they are, you know, stealing things on video games that they're not supposed to be stealing. Or um, they're watching things that they're not supposed to be watching. There are boys and girls who are not set apart, okay? I want you to be boys and girls who don't want to be like everybody else, okay? We need to be over here because we know God's word. We know God's word says, don't lie, don't steal, don't cheat, don't um, do a good job, do your best on your score, um, obey your parents. We're supposed to be set apart through your word. And Jesus is praying for you all the time that you would be set apart, that you would hear his word and that you would obey it. And some of you, you know, you're stuck at home. And I don't know if you have thought about this, but hey, this is a really good time to read your Bible. I was trying to find my action Bible. Uh, it's buried in there somewhere. But this is a really good time to get your Bible out and read it, okay? Um, if you have an action Bible, read your action Bible. Maybe you have a CD that has uh, where the Bible reads you. That's a good time to read your Bible. So you can know how to be different 
from all the people who are not obeying God's word. Another thing that Jesus said is, Father, help my followers to love one another, love one another, and live in peace. Jesus knew these disciples were about to go out, and they were going to start preaching all about Jesus. And he knew that it was going to be hard to love everybody because there were going to be people trying to hurt them. There were going to be people saying, we don't believe in Jesus. We, we, we didn't see him die on the cross. We didn't see him rise from the dead, so we don't believe. And Jesus knew it was going to be hard on them to love one another and to live in peace. But that's hard for us, too, because we live in a house where maybe we have a brother or sister or um, maybe we, we um, have a mom or dad who is like, hey, I need you to clean your room every day or I need you to do your schoolwork. And we, we don't want to love them. We don't want to be nice to them. We want to do what we want to do. We just want to have fun and play and eat what we want to eat and go where we want to go. We want to be in charge. And God is saying, no, mm -mm. love one another and live in peace. Jesus is always praying for you to love your parents, to love your grandparents, to love your aunts and your uncles and your neighbors and your brothers and your sisters and to live in peace with them. He wants us to get along. Even when we're stuck inside a house, Jesus wants us to love one another and live in peace. And the last thing that Jesus prayed over his disciples was, Father, I want my followers to live with me someday. In other words, you know, I'm going to die on this cross, but I'm going to rise again. And then, then after I've spent some time on this earth, seeing everybody, you know, after I've rose again, then I'm going to go up to heaven. And one day, God, I want my people who have me in their heart, I want them to come to heaven too. And we know that God is going to answer that prayer of Jesus. But that was something that Jesus is praying for us even now. He's praying, God, one day I want to see those boys and girls that have asked me in my heart. I, I want to see um, those moms and dads. I want to see them, not today, but one day. And Jesus is praying for you. So um, that's our Bible story uh, that Jesus is praying for you. So when you're scared or you're lonely or you're wondering, what is Jesus doing to make things better? First of all, he's praying for you. That's cool, right? Jesus is right now up there sitting right beside God, and he's saying, do you see my Liam down there? Do you see my um, Eva down there? I love them. Protect them. Don't let Satan lie to them. Help them to love one another. Help them to live in peace. Help them to, to be different. Be set apart from everybody else. Help them to have joy. And those are things Jesus is praying for you every day. He says, Eli, one day I'm going to get to see you. But until then, I'm praying for you because I love you. Okay? All right, so that's our Bible story. Now, a couple of things I want you to do. This is something that maybe you haven't done yet in all your drawing and creativity things you're doing this week. Maybe if you have a big, big sheet of paper, you could get a big sheet of paper. But see what I have here? This is like a neighborhood, okay? If you have a big sheet of paper, you could draw your neighborhood. Um, if you have only small sheets of paper, then you could just draw the neighborhood on that one sheet of paper. But I want you to draw places you go, okay? Um, right now, maybe you're just going home, but I want, or you're just staying at home, but I want you to think about in a normal day, where do you go? You go to school, you go to church, you go to home, you go to Walmart, like draw those places. And then I want you to maybe put a little person, like a stick person of you, and then put another person right beside you. That's Jesus. Because you know, Jesus goes everywhere you go, everywhere you go. Um, if you want to have a snack to eat, I want you to do um, some counting, okay? So, like, let's say that you have some chocolate chip cookies. Now, I only have some little mini, mini chocolate chip cookies. But when I count my chocolate chip cookies, I've got one, two, three, four, five, six. I think I have six chocolate chips in my chocolate chip cookie here because there's a little bitty one. 
But I would want to tell Jesus six things that I could talk to him about. So I could talk to him about my hair. Now, I know you're all thinking, why would I talk to Jesus about my hair? Well, you know, some of you need a haircut. If I showed you what Jaden's hair looked like today, you would all be like, he needs a haircut. You know, I kind of need to get a perm. I remember a long time ago praying and asking Jesus, Jesus, I need a perm. And I didn't really have the money to go get a perm. And a lady um, called me that week and said, hey, if you need a perm, come up to my shop and I'll just charge you like $11 for the chemicals and I'll do your perm. So maybe right now you're thinking, I need a haircut. Or um, I, I, I just want to go somewhere. So that's one thing I could pray about. I could pray to Jesus about my hair. Um, I could pray to Jesus about toilet paper because I've heard that, you know, they're running out of toilet paper at the stores and I want to make sure we have enough toilet paper. I could pray to Jesus about my friends. I haven't seen my friends in a long time. And so I could talk to Jesus about my friends and, uh, you know, that tell Jesus I'm worried about them. I want to make sure they stay okay. Um, I could talk to Jesus about um, getting this sickness over with. Like, God, can you please work a miracle to where we can, you know, get rid of this sickness? Uh, maybe I want to pray for my family. Maybe I, maybe I want to talk to God about getting along with people. Maybe I'm not loving one another and living in peace with my brothers and sisters right now or you know it's getting crowded in my house and I don't want to share my stuff I can talk to Jesus about those things okay so whatever snack you have maybe laying around your house if it's a cookie that has stripes on it count how many stripes are on the cookie that's how many things I want you to think of that you can talk to God about because you can talk to God about anything big things yes God help my grandma to get better or God help my dog or whatever. But you can pray about little things too. Like, you know, help my fingernail that keeps getting a bit too short and it hurts. Or, you know, help me to get along with my brother. You can pray about anything, okay? Talk to God about anything. Um, a game that you could play to go along with this. This is a bean bag. If you don't have a bean bag, you could use a ball. But I'm going to throw the bean bag up in the air. And I'm going to say... Jesus, I want to pray for, and then I'm going to say a name. You can say your friends' names. You can say people at church. You can say family members. But you're going to see how many names you can come up with. And try not to drop it. So I'm going to be like, Jesus, pray for Liam. Jesus, pray for Eli. Jesus, pray for Kenzie. Jesus, I pray for Savannah. Jesus, I pray for Eva. Jesus, I pray for Weston. Jesus, I pray for Halen. Jesus, I pray for Corey. It, you're just going to keep going and keep going and see how long you could go before you run out. See if you can do all the kids at church. Or see if you can name all the kids in your class. But as you're doing it, you can be really praying. Like, Jesus, you know, please help all the kids in my class to stay, to stay safe. Jesus, I ask you to keep Savannah safe. Jesus, I ask you to keep Kenzie safe. Jesus, I ask you to keep... Like that, Halen's there. Like, you could just keep going and going. And it's a way to pray for everybody in your class or everybody in your family um, for whatever they need, okay? Um, so, there we go. We got a snack and we got an art. Draw out your neighborhood, okay? And if you're also, another thing you could do, you can draw out people that you want to pray for. If you want to draw your friends and, you know, put that on your wall and every day be praying for your friends, be praying for your teacher and the kids in your class and your friends that they won't get sick, that they will have everything they need, that they'll have food, that they'll have water, that they will have toilet paper, that they will um, stay safe and be okay. And um, yeah, if you talk to anybody this week um, and they seem like they're kind of sad, Tell them, hey, you should watch uh, Miss Lorena's Bible lesson um, at Rocket Baptist uh, YouTube page because she talked about Jesus prays for us. And so if you're worried or you're sad or you're scared, you can listen to this and know Jesus cares about you. He loves you and um, he's praying for you right now, every day, all the time, no matter what day it is, he loves you. 
Guys, it was so good to spend some time with you today. I miss you guys so much. I can't wait to see your face, see how you've grown, see how many teeth you pulled out, or see how your hair has grown, or see what new things you can do, like how you can throw the ball better, or you can skip now, or whatever. I can't wait to see you guys. I hope that you are being awesome and at everything. I hope you're doing your chores and cleaning your room and reading your Bible and doing your schoolwork. I hope you are just doing an amazing job. And if you are, good job. God is so proud of you and he loves you and he sees everything that you're doing. I hope you have a great day and I hope to see you real soon. I love you so much. <laughs>